Mark Moreno runs the website climatedepot.com for the committee for a constructive tomorrow. Until spring of 2009, he served as communications director for the Republicans on the U.S. Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works. Moreno commenced work for the committee under Senator James Enhoff, who was majority chairman of the committee until 2007 and is now majority minority ranking member. Moreno is also a former journalist with the Cybercast News Service, CNS. Mark, I don't have words to describe, A, how big these emails and documents are, and B, how outlandish the spin is by the hijackers, the pirates. They're not liberals. They're not idiots. They're not fools. They're not misguided souls. They know it's all a fraud. And as you said during the break when I was talking to you, their ship is sinking, the Titanic sinking, and the band's still playing. Uh, criminal investigations are being called for by Senator Inhofe and others, uh, m members of Parliament in England. Break down, sir, what we're dealing with here. Good to have you with us. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for having me on. Well, first of all, I've seen this before. I covered, I did an Amazon rainforest documentary in 2000. And the gist of that documentary was that the Amazon rainforest scare was not only vastly overblown, but without scientific foundation. The idea that rainforests were all disappearing, there were predictions that rain, Amazon will be gone by the year 2000. Fast forward to January of this year, the New York Times openly admitting that for every acre of rainforest cut, 50 are growing back, quoting scientists saying maybe it wasn't such an urgent cause. After all, they're calling it the galloping jungle as people leave uh, the rainforest to go live in cities, the forests are reverting to nature. Guess what? Canceled eco scare, and that was the eco scare du jour of the seventies, of the late seventies into the eighties, particularly in the early nineties. There were stings, rainforest concerts, and now it looks like we're coming to the to the at least the beginning of the end or the rapid disintegration of the man-made global warming fears. The bottom line is, this is the upper echelon of United Nations scientists. Kevin Trenbeth, the lead lead author. Michael Mann, inventor of the hockey stick temperature graph, purportedly shown in the 20th century, unprecedented. Uh, Phil Jones, the head of this center in Europe and in, in uh, England, who is also a top UN scientist. These were the top men conspiring, caught, as they say, caught on tape, caught on email, and caught in documents. And what they're talking about is hiding the decline in temperatures. They're talking about uh, how they openly admitting they don't understand the natural variability in nature and things like geoengineering would have no impact because, quote, we can't account for what's happening in the climate system, unquote. And they go on and they talk about conspiring to keep fellow scientists who are skeptical and or inconvenient data out of peer-reviewed journals. They openly talk about how they're going to conspire to keep out studies that are inconvenient in the U.N. process. This is the U.N. panel that won a Nobel Prize and shared it with Al Gore in, in 2007. People are already starting to chant, take it back, take it back. This group, and through these emails, it is exposing that essentially they were nothing more than environmental partisans trying to fulfill a grand narrative of dangerous man-made global warming, and they were going to make it happen. This is manufactured science at its best. It's the best science. That, man, that we can manufacture, and the United Nations was manufacturing it. This lays waste to the notion, peddled by the media and Al Gore, that there's a consensus of scientists. If you look at these emails, all they're doing is fretting about all the skeptics, about all the critiques, about all the mistakes they're making, and how to spin them, how to cover them up, how to destroy freedom of information documents. This is not a pretty picture. Uh, but shockingly, and the most shocking point, I'm sorry to filibuster here, Alex. I did work in the Senate, so if you want to... Do it! Do, do it! We love you! <laughs> okay. Um, what the most shocking, uh, you know, yeah, but, but the most shocking angle of all of this is before this came out last week, this movement was already on its deathbed. And what do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. Peer-reviewed studies showing at least three decades more of cooling or no warming. U.N. scientists in September warning U.N. meetings of the potential for decades of global cooling ahead. Uh, we had um, other peer-reviewed studies showing the CO2 forcing nowhere near what the U.N. has said. Multiple peer-reviewed studies kept coming out. More and more scientists were descending. The ultimate pinnacle of the collapse of man-made global warming fears was when President Barack Obama announced that nothing was going to happen at this U.N. conference. This prompted European lefty socialists in the in Der Spiegel and other places to attack Obama as the next George W. Bush. Not only that, in the U.S., global warming was so bad in such a moribund state 
and Senator Al Franken was bailing out on the climate bill. It was so bad that former John McCain aides were stunned at his about face on global warming, despite having sponsored two global warming bills. Well, let me ask you this, though. Are we going to see Newt Gingrich and these other uh, people that call themselves Republicans but are really globalists, are we going to see Newt Gingrich, who's always pushing man-made climate change and global tax, are we going to see him apologize like George Mambiot, the socialist, has done, now saying we've got to look at the evidence? Well, very good point. I don't know about Gingrich yet, but I will tell you this. Charlie Crist, the governor of Florida, the Republican Al Gore, who used to appear with Sheryl Crow, is now running from global warming. He now says cap and trade is a tax. He is backing away. Most shockingly, Tim Pawlenty, who has actually wrapped himself in the mantle of a politically correct global warming cause for Republicans, is now questioning the science and is being attacked by the same people he made friends with. He is now a skeptic. Almost all of the Minnesota governor candidates in the GOP, skeptics of global warming. Almost all the Illinois candidates, skeptics of global warming. This is a sea change. And you know why the public tea parties and the town halls, more, as of late October, more Americans believe in haunted houses than man-made global warming. Oh, Mark, Science that Mark, that's AM. another point. I wanted to go over a few of the frauds. Al Gore put out the fake graph, as you know and have documented. He's now had to remove it, showing carbon dioxide rising with temperature when it actually follows hundreds of years after. That's official. Ice core, all the major universities. Uh, they've yeah, been caught been lying. Boy, they've been. Uh, but I want you to cover that. But also, they've been caught lying and saying all scientists agree, the science is in, no one disagrees. That hoax has imploded. Didn't this really start backfiring on them the last few years because their lies only got bigger and more arrogant and more ridiculous, and they started calling Al Gore a prophet? Well, yes, that was Oprah, uh, Oprah Winfrey called them the Noah of our time. Well, here's the deal. Al, when you said the lies got so outrageous, here's a, here's a common pat answer Al Gore likes to say. The same people who deny the you know, man-made global warming are the same people who think the moon landing was staged in a movie lot. Oh, really, Mr. Vice President? How come two of the moonwalkers themselves, Jack Schmidt uh, and Buzz Aldrin, have come out as huge global warming skeptics? They don't even check their, their, their throwaway talking points at this point. It, it's so bad. And by the way, we've had both of them on here repeating what you just said, but go ahead. Well, on almost every point from Al Gore's film, from the high point of global warming hysteria in 2006, has been mockingly uh, a cruel joke on Al Gore. Whether it's Mount Kilimanjaro, which he did, which he tried to highlight, is not being reduced because of global warming. It's because of deforestation at the base. He talked about rising sea level. Guess what? Uh, one scientist put it the best. If sea level's rising due to global warming, no one's told sea level. And another <laughs> institute has said, there's no acceleration in sea level. From A to Z, the Arctic has gained in the summer the size of one and a half Texas since 2007. The Antarctic had the record sea ice extent for the summer that they've ever had since satellite monitoring well, Mark, in the 70s. Mark, Greenland has, has cooled uh, since 1940 before after 80% of CO2 went in the atmosphere. On almost every point you can mention, Al Gore claims there's more tornadoes. Guess what? There are small, more smaller tornadoes are detected, but because we have Doppler and radar, we didn't have 10, 20, 30 years ago. Everything he said is now being turned into a cruel joke on him, and okay. now the public gets it, world leaders are getting it, and now finally the U.N. is being exposed to what's going on behind the scenes. There's a bunch of partisan activists trying to manufacture science. Okay, you're right at the heart of the fight against this, so I want to pick your brain here with some quick, important questions. We know that they said global cooling in the 60s, a global tax was needed, and then when that didn't happen, they said, okay, deforestation, we need a global tax, and when that didn't happen, they said man-made global warming, when that didn't happen, now they're calling it climate change. The climate's always changing. We have the seasons. We have uh, decade-long seasons, not just yearly seasons. So, A, what are they going to do now? What's their new scam? A, so I want to cover that in a moment. B, uh, they don't care if we prove the truth. Schwarzenegger's banning and taxing TVs. They're brainwashing kids in every public school in the country. Uh, they're teaching us about carbon credits. Uh, the governments of the world don't care if it's a fraud. So, 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 A, what's going to be their new scam? And B, how do we get them out of the schools? How do we stop their brainwashing? How do we stop the cult, in Al Gore's own words, this new religion 
of world government worshiping from taking over? Well, first of all, I'm Schwarzenegger. He is an embarrassment to science. He actually came out in a radio address, I believe it was last spring, and told people they should hang their clothes to air dry to save energy. The same Arnold Schwarzenegger who was commuting to work in the governor's uh, office in a private jet had the audacity to tell Californians we're going to be imposing huge regressive energy taxes on due to uh, man-made global warming fears that they should be air drying their clothes. On the second point, you mentioned global government. People say, oh, well, you're a conspiracy. That's it. No, we use their own words. Al Gore in July, the U.S. climate bill will lead to global governance. Former French President Jean Chirac, the Kyoto Protocol on Global Warming, the first step to an authentic global governance. Kate Banting Moon just said we need an equitable global governance in the next climate bill. Those are their words, their quotes, their exact words. 